Alright, welcome, thanks for joining. We're going to be going into bond duration, convexity, and uh, some of the math involved, a review of some of the basics, and a practical approach to duration error, as well as how to calculate for, or to correct duration error using convexity adjustments. So let's start with a review of the basics here. We have our price yield curve as yields increase, prices decrease, as yields decrease, prices increase, inverse relationship. So an illustration of that here, um, let's say we invest 105, get 110 back, our return is about 5%. If we invest less, 100, get 110 back, our return is 10%. Simple illustration of that inverse relationship. And I think it's smarter to think about that through economic standpoint. So as demand for bonds increases, prices go up, yields go down. Demand decreases, prices go down, yields go up. And uh, from the supply side, um, with an abundance of bonds, prices go down, yields go up. Scarcity of bonds, prices go up, yields go down. Let's uh, move on to duration here. So we have a bond that matures in 50 years, quarterly payments, coupon rate is 7%, and we are using Excel's function for duration here to get our duration figure of 15.81. Our modified duration through Excel's function is 15.57. Our technical term for duration is actually, it is the present value weighted average of the times of cash flows. It's very wordy, don't really think about it too much, it'll probably just throw you off initially. But it's used the same way as modified duration, which is the percent change in price for a 1% change in yield. So <clears throat> you may be wondering, um, now with our price yield curve and these lines, which are given by duration and modified duration. Duration's in blue, modified duration's in green. They're so close to each other that you don't really see duration, the blue line, except for peaking out just a bit above and a bit below here. This is a zoom in on the ends. So as I was saying, you may be wondering if the duration figures are the slope of this line and they're not. It's because duration is giving, and modified duration, is giving us the percent change in price our y-axis is in different terms. It's not the percent change, it's the actual price, which would give us the actual change of price. So to illustrate how to change our, our duration, which is percent, into the actual change, let's go into how you went from actual change to percent. So let's say our actual change is 20. To get to our percent change, we just divide it by the initial price. Let's say it was 120. So we just divide it by our original price, and that gives us the percent change. So to get it back, to the actual change from the percent change, just multiply it by the original price. And so it is back to 20. So take our modified duration figure, multiply it by our original price, 115.82, and that gives us the slope of this line because we are now using the same terms, price, for our y-axis. So this is actually a slope of 1803, which was on a, you know, if our y-axis and our x-axis had the same terms, the same increments here, then this would be incredibly steep. But our x-axis is really stretched out, really magnified. Here we're going to fill our 50, but here we're only going to 11%, 0.11. So this x-axis is really stretched out. That's why it doesn't look so steep here. Um, <clears throat> another thing you should know is mod or dollar duration, which is the change in price for a 1% change in yield. And that tells us, we we'll move this 1%, our price changes how much. That's what we want, what we want to know. Um, our rise over our run. So that would be the same as the slope of this line, except this slope is for a rise. It gives us a rise of 1803, right, over a run of 1. That's how slope works. It's over 1, a base of 1, always. However, a base of 1 is a change in yield of 100%. A dollar duration is defined as a... 1% change in yield. So basically our dollar duration, just take our slope and divide it by 100 to change our base from a change in yield of 100% to 1%. All right, so it looks like the duration line and modified duration lines are tangent to this price yield curve, but they both meet the price yield curve at the point of 6% and a price of 115.82. And they have different slopes which are derived by taking the duration figure times our original price. So they can't both be the tangent line, just remembering our basic algebra. 
So I ran a calculation to calculate the difference uh, between the prices implied by the two duration lines and the actual price on the price yield curve to discover which of these duration lines is at any point above the price yield curve that would make it the secant line, not the tangent line. So it turns out that the duration line is above the price yield curve right here at 5.9%. I also drilled down here and is also above the price yield curve for that entire range, 5.9%, all the way up to where it meets it at 6%. And why is that? Um, well, on the left, it's on the left because this, we know that the modified duration calculation, which we'll get to in part two, is the tangent line through this check here. It never goes above it, but it does meet it at 6%. And the duration line is above it at 5.9% um, to 6%. So since the slope of the duration line is steeper than the actual tangent line, it'll be above the price yield curve on the left. And we see the duration line here above, higher here, lower here, so it's steeper and it is above the price yield curve on the left because it is steeper than the tangent line. If it were less steep, it would be above the price yield curve on the right side. So this here is a zoom in of the at 5.94% where the duration line is above price yield curve and then modified duration line is below as it always is except for where it meets the price yield curve at 6%. So let's venture into duration error. So as I previously mentioned a bit, um, this predicted price based on duration is a straight line but our actual price yield curve is convex, it's curved upward, concave upward. You can see as our um, calculation for a, as our number for a yield change increases, our, our predicted price based on duration is increasingly inaccurate the farther away we get. And that's duration error, which is caused by the per convexity of the price yield curve, and we will get into that into part two. We'll go into the calculations, we'll learn how to correct for convexity, and um, just cover pretty much everything you may need to know about duration and convexity and give you a whole thorough approach to that. So tune in for part two. Thanks.